Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another video with Mr. Kenton. This is for AP Chemistry, and this is in our kinetics section. And a lot of people have been asking questions and been asking for some instructions on how do we do the graphing component in our calculator when we're given data? How do we produce those graphs to check to see if something is zeroth, first, or second order? And so what I'm going to be doing today is walking you through a problem where you would have to do that and how you would do that in your calculator. Again, the big part here is just remembering what are the button clicks that we need to have on our calculator so that we can plot this information quickly, effectively, and then look at that information so we can get to our answer. Okay, so let's take a look at the following example. You know, it asks us, is the reaction zero, first, or second order based on the following data? Okay, and so you've got your time that's been given in seconds in the left, and then you've got your concentration with regards to this reactant NO2 that's on the right. Now, I think it's important to recognize that when it comes to looking at this data, if you're given all of the data, they give it to you because currently... This is set up as concentration data, so they've given a, this in terms of zeroth order. And um, when you follow along with that, um, you know, you could look at it and you could see what are the changes um, that are taking place. If the changes are always the same, then you're going to know that it's linear, right? Um, and so you would know that it would be whatever that is. So that's something you can look at. When you're looking at data, if you're seeing that the change is happening by the same clip at every time interval, you're seeing the same increase or decrease or change in between steps, that's probably letting you know that that's going to be um, the order of that reactant. Um, but again, the purpose of this video is looking at it from the perspective of how do we do this graphically? And so um, in order for us to do this, we have to have our graphing calculator. Now, so that you guys can follow along with me, I'm going to pull this up here, and so now hopefully you see on, on the side of my screen over there, you see a calculator, right? And so obviously, first thing we're going to want to do, you're going to want to turn on your calculator. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to input all of this information um, statistically. So we're going to use the stat button here on our calculator. So I'm going to click stat. And then you're given these lists. You're given this, these options. You've got edit, you got calc, and you got tests. Um, and so um, so we click stat. We want to we want to edit. So we do second. Or excuse me. We did just click the stat button. We're going to click number one is edit. We're going to click one. Um, and so then it takes us to these lists. We've got L1, L2, L3, and it should go on um, pretty far over. So we're going to start with L1. Now, in this particular case, for our first set of data, we want this to be our X variable, which is going to be our time. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to type in the numerical values for our time interval. So if you remember correctly, the first time interval was at 0, 0.0. So we're just going to type that in. That bam. 5.0, there you go, 10.0, um, 15.0, and 20. Oh, oops, 20.0. All right, so we've got our time intervals. Now, the next thing that we're going to want to do is... In our next list, we're just going to click over. We're now in L2. This is going to be our Y variable that we're going to be taking a look at. And so now I want to input the concentrations that were provided to me um, in the table. So at time equals zero, my concentration was 0 0.100 molar. Now notice in the list, it's not going to give you all the significant digits. That's okay, um, but I'm just going to put them in anyway. So then we've got 0.017. For my L for my second, then I've got 0 0.0090, then I've got 0 0.0062, and I've got 0 0.0047.
All right. And so from there, I've input all of my information with respect to the concentration. Now, like I said initially, because I've been given my concentration information, this would be for measuring zeroth order. Now, it asks us, is it zeroth, first, or second? Now, to go ahead and save myself some time, I'm going to go ahead and for list three and list four, L3 and L4, I'm going to go ahead and set it up so that I can have it in first and second order, graphically speaking, set up. So remember, for zeroth order, it's simply concentration versus time. For first order, it's the natural log of the concentration versus time. And then for second order, it's going to be one over the concentration. Okay, and so for L3, a quick little shortcut that I can do is I can come up here, I can move up to L3, and L3, we can set it equal to something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set L3 equal to the natural log. And what I'm going to want to do is I want to take the natural log of all of my data for L2. Because the natural log of my concentrations is what I need for my first order. So I'm going to hit natural log, so hit the natural log button. I'm going to click second. Now I need to come over here and hit the stat button because I want the lists. Then it's going to give me the list that I can choose from. So I've got L1, L2, L3, so on and so forth. Well, I want L2 data, so I'm going to select L2. And then I'm going to close my parentheses here. I'm going to click Enter. And then what's going to happen is the calculator is going to go ahead and it's going to take the natural log of all of the data in L2. And now it has created my data points that I need for my graph, OK? Now, if you want to, you can go and check all of those numbers after the fact to make sure that is the natural log of 0.1, negative 2.303. So you got negative LN. I'm doing this on my actual handheld calculator, 0.1, and um, or just taking the natural log of that. And yes, you get negative 2.303. So it did that properly. Now, I also need to do this for my second order, and that's where L4 is going to come into play. So for L4, we want to set that equal to, now again, I'm going to do parentheses, 1 divided by, and then here again, I'm going to do second. I'm going to click the stat button, and then again, I want to do L2, so I'm going to click 2. I want 1 over L2 to be my data point. I'm going to close that parenthesis. And then I'm going to click enter. And so now my L4 data is going to be 1 over my concentrations. Okay. Now I've got all that. Now what I can do, if I want to figure out if this is 0th, 1st, or 2nd order, remember we're looking for a, a consistent change in each of those. We want to see a linear change in all of those values. And so again, we're going to look at this graphically. So what do I want to do? What I want to do is I want to create a stat plot, right? And so now that I've got all my data, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click second stat plot. And so now you should see this menu here. So again, second, the Y equals button for stat plot. And so now I have these options to turn on or off these various stat plots. Now you got one, and all of them are currently set to where they, they compare the data for list one and list two. So what we're going to do is we're going to click enter here. Um, I do want this turned on. I want it to be a scatter plot. I want L1 and L2 to be my data. And then I just wanted to show this particular mark. So now that it's done that, I'm going to click graph. Now, when I graph it, you look at it, you see your data points, but it's not really giving you a good picture of what it is that you're trying to look at. And so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to zoom. So we're going to click on the zoom button here. And then we get these different options of how we can zoom in and view our data. Now, because this is statistical data, because we got it from experimental stuff, we're going to do what's called zoom stat, which should be zoom nine, 
right? So we click the number nine. And then what it does is it creates, um, it zooms in so that you can actually see what's going on with your data. Now, as you look at this, this is very obviously exponential decay right? It's not linear decay. It's not linear change. It's exponential. And so that's letting us know that, okay, this is zeroth order. If this were to, so to be linear, or if this were to be zeroth order, we would need to see a linear relationship. That's not what we see. So we know it's not zeroth order. So our next task is going to be, all right, we're going to go second stat plot again. We're going to turn off our first stat plot. So I'm going to click enter here. I'm going to turn that off. You know, go all the way down here, click enter there, and then we're going to do second stat plot again, and then we're going to go to number two. Or actually, we can just stay here, and what we can do, keep it on. Sorry, I'm being a little redundant here. What we want to change now is we want to change our Y list. So currently, we did it where it was with respect to L2, our L2 data, which was for zeroth order. Well, now we want to check it with respect to first order, so we're going to click second stat. And we want to now substitute instead of L2, we want it to be L3. So I'm going to click 3 here. So now when I do my stat plot, it's going to do time versus the natural log of my concentration. Click enter, click enter again. Then we're going to click graph. Now again, it's in zoom stat. So it was zoom stat for the previous data. The data is different. So we're going to click zoom again. We're going to click zoom 9. All right, and so there, we got zoom nine. Now looking at that, again, we're still seeing some of that decay, right? It's not it's not quite a linear relationship, so it's definitely not first order. Um, probably meaning it's gonna be second order, but we can look at that just to make sure. We'll do zoom, sorry, we'll do zoom, and I'm gonna do, um, No, we'll just, we'll go back to the stat plot. We'll do stat plot. We'll go in here. And now we want to change it from L3. We want that to be our L4 list now. So now we're going to click 4 to get L4. Notice L1, L4. We've got our mark. And then we're going to do zoom 9 again. And so now we look at our data. And again, now what you see is you see a positively increasing line right? Um, and so that's what we would anticipate for something that's second order is that we would get a positively sloping straight line for something that is second order. So the data would suggest that this is going to be a, this reaction is oh, second order with NO2. with respect to the reactant NO2 in whatever this reaction is, right? And so that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you would use your calculator to be able to, to graphically look at data like that. Let's say you're given the zeroth order stuff and you want to also look at first and second order. That's what you'd have to do. You take advantage of the, the stat feature on your calculator to you create your lists, um, I even showed you how you can go ahead and have the lists do the math for you so you're not having to do natural log of, of all of your numbers, plugging that in, and then doing one over all of your numbers. You can actually have the calculator do that. Then you can graph those using the stat plot function, and then you can look at each of your stat plots by using zoom stat and looking for which one gives you that linear relationship. I hope this video was helpful. Hope that gives you some insight. Hopefully those instructions will help you um, as you're working on problems. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. Hope this was helpful, and I'll see you guys again real soon. Take care.